Oh, the Triumph Tiger 800. This blimey brilliant piece of British engineering is a longtime staple of the adventure bike community and probably the gateway drug to adventure bike riding. I mean, almost every YouTuber and adventure bike enthusiast out there on the internet has owned at least one of these dishy motorbikes in their lifetime. Not to mention, the Triumph brand itself exudes coolness and European style. So maybe you were just faffing around the internet and you ended up on this video out of curiosity, boredom, or you are ready to lay down a few of your hard-earned tenors on a used Tigre. And you want to know, is this a good bike? So on that note, goons and gals, I will give you my honest opinion of what I love and what I hate about this motorcycle after three years and 18,000 miles of use. Now I can honestly say I've probably used this bike for more than what it was intended for, and I've probably taken this bike to places most adventure bike riders never will. Now this doesn't make me a better rider, it just means that I'm a goon, and this is how I ride bikes. So enjoy the video. What I like most about my Triumph Tiger is the engine, and when I'm talking about the engine here, I'm talking about the reliability of this 800cc power plant. Now the Japanese get all of the credit when it comes to building reliable and quality motorcycles, and I get that. They've been around for several decades, delivering an amazing product, and they've earned that right. However, times have changed, and many of these European manufacturers have closed the gap when it comes to building reliable motorcycles. And on the top of that list, I'm going to put Triumph. And I'm going to go as far as to say right now that Triumph motorcycles themselves are just as reliable as any Japanese manufacturer, including Honda and Yamaha. Now, before you call me crazy, just listen to why I would say that. First of all, it's my personal experience with this bike. With over 18,000 miles, I've had zero, I mean zero problems with this engine. All I've ever done was just change the oil every few thousand miles, clean out the air filter every few thousand miles, put gas in it, start it up, and Bob's your uncle. It has never broken down a single day in its life. Now this is not the only Triumph motorcycle that I own. I also have a 2012 Triumph Speed Triple 1050. That bike has over 22,000 miles and the same story there. No engine problems whatsoever. I raced a Daytona 675, no problems ever with that motor. So having owned three different Triumph motorcycles with a combined mileage of over 55,000, I have never ever had a problem with any of these bikes. So if you're someone out there who's interested in buying a secondhand Triumph with maybe 15,000 kilometers or 10,000 miles or more on it, unless the owner of that motorcycle put sugar in the gas tank and ran it with no oil, I'm sure that bike will give you years upon years of enjoyment. And you don't have to take my word for it. Go to any YouTuber that owns a Triumph motorcycle, go to any Triumph forums across the internet, and you're gonna see a common thing that Triumph owners are not having mechanical problems with their motorcycles. So thumbs up to Triumph for building a quality motorcycle engine. The other thing I like about the engine is obviously the sound. There's something very addictive about this three-cylinder motor. There's something passionate and fulfilling about the sound of this motorcycle. I really think I could just sit around and listen to it all day like it's a song. Now that might be a stretch, but really these bikes do sound good. Now speaking of the engine, let's talk about what I don't like. To me, this motorcycle has a significant lack of power. Now I know the numbers look great on paper when you're looking at torque and you're looking at horsepower and from the mid range to the top range it is sweet but down low to me this bike really struggles. Now for a lot of you that might not be a problem but if you want to get off of the road and start to do some technical trails and you find yourself coming across obstacles where it's a luxury to be able to just loft the front wheel over it or just kind of clutch the engine and up it goes, you're gonna struggle with that when it comes to this Tiger 800. Now I'll talk about this in another section. A lot of that has to do not just with the weaker engine compared to the V-twins in this category, 
but it also has a lot to do with the rake and trail of this motorcycle. So if you're one of those riders out there that like that instantaneous rush that when you crack open the throttle, the bike just takes off like a bat out of hell, you're not gonna find that here. Again, this might not be a problem for everyone, but to me, I'd like to have just a little bit more. The other thing I don't like about this engine is I feel it needs a seventh gear. When you start to top out around 80 miles an hour, you can hear the engine and it sounds like it's struggling. Now I'm gonna give Triumph credit here because even though the motor sounds like it's struggling, you don't feel that translating into the seat or into the handlebars because you can ride this bike for thousands of miles easily. Now I've looked across a lot of different Triumph Tiger forums and I noticed that a lot of them re-gear their motorcycles a little taller to compensate for that. However, because I went off-road, I went the other way and went a little bit lower. Even with the stock gearing that comes from this bike, it still feels like it needs a seventh gear. All in all, this is an amazingly reliable engine with a really sexy and sweet sound. I just wish we had a teeny weeny little bit more torque. Now we'll talk about the ergonomics of this motorcycle and I probably gave away some of my secrets before getting here. And I'll just say this, this bike is super comfortable. So if your goal is to knock out serious freeway miles or you have several, several miles that you need to travel via the freeway to get to your favorite trail, you're gonna love the way this motorcycle works on the highway. Now I'm about five feet, eight inches, 160 pounds. This bike fits me like a glove. You have two different seat adjustments and when I sit it on the low adjustment, it feels like you're sitting inside of the bike, like you're in a comfy lazy boy. You just kind of reach out your hands and they lay perfectly on the bars. The TFT display and screen is easy to read in the daytime and the nighttime, at dusk, at dawn or wherever you are and the wind protection is really nice and I don't notice a whole lot of buffering coming from the front windscreen. And all of the passengers that I've ever carried on this bike felt very comfortable too, so it's good to carry a passenger with it. Also while riding this motorcycle, I've done lots of traveling and it had gear on it and it doesn't affect the overall handling or the comfort of the motorcycle. Now a lot of that has to do with the way this bike is set up. It is more road oriented than it is off-road oriented and Triumph has never tried to lead us in any other direction. In fact, it's so good on the road, I've recently had the opportunity to ride both an 890 Adventure R and a Yamaha Tenere on the freeway. And again, I'll go out on a limb here to say that this 2018 Triumph Tiger 800 is a better road bike than either one of them. It just really works in that setting. So again, if this is gonna be your main goal, I think you'll be very happy with this bike. Now there are a few quirks when it comes to the ergonomics. And the first I'm gonna talk about something I mentioned in the initial review, and that is the way that the frame kind of sticks out a little bit on the sides. Now when you're riding on the freeway, that's not such a big deal, but for you other riders out there that do any sort of off-roading, if you like to ride the bike a lot with your legs like I do, and you like to grip the tank, at first, it's a little weird because you're gonna feel, for some riders shorter like myself, your knees are sort of squeezing against this frame. If you're a little bit taller, it's probably gonna be somewhere around your shins. And it's not a deal breaker or it doesn't hinder the handling that much. It's just something if you come from a dirt biking background where you're used to maneuvering the bike a lot with your legs, you're gonna find that a little unsettling at first. And you're gonna have to change your riding style a little bit. Once you're standing up and you get around that, the tank itself is very, very thin and easy to grip with your knees. But those frames sticking out there on the side a little bit is somewhat annoying, but very easy to get used to. Now I said before that I'm five feet eight and this bike fits me perfect. So while I'm doing any kind of off-road, I don't feel the need for any bar risers. It's just a really nice position for me. But if you happen to be 5'10 or taller, you're probably gonna want some bar risers when you're going off-road. The bars themselves seem to be both the perfect width for on and off-road use, but you may need some bar risers if you're a little taller. 
Now let's talk a little bit more about the on and off-road performance of this motorcycle. I think I've given away most of the clues up to this point about how I feel when it comes to riding this bike on the road. It's amazing. And one of the reasons for that is because of the rake and trail of this motorcycle and the way it's set up. It's set up much like a sports bike where you have that stink bug style. You have a lower front end with a higher rear end. By having more weight on the front and a higher rear, it makes the bike more responsive to steering inputs and makes it more flickable side to side. Also by having more weight on the front end, not only do you have more grip on your front tire, but you also feel more feedback from the road. That type of setup is very inspiring, especially if you're carving canyons or going through the twisties. So for you newer riders, the rake and trail of this motorcycle, combined with the smooth, usable power of the engine and the lower seat height, will make you feel comfortable and confident straight away. Now, if you're going off-road and you're just doing the occasional fire trail or gravel road, you're going to find that those ergonomics work well too. But if you're looking for more than that and you have off-road experience, it's not going to take you very long to reach the limits of a Tiger 800. And the reason is because what makes it shine so well on the road becomes its Achilles heel off of the road. With so much weight on the front end, the bike feels like it just wants to plow into the dirt off-road. And if you live in an area where there's a lot of sand, loose, loamy dirt, or mud, this bike will really struggle. As I mentioned in one of my earlier reviews, it feels like there is a shovel on the front end and a concrete block on the back end. Now don't get me wrong, you can easily keep up with your buddies on their Tenere's and 890's with this off the road. It will do it, but you are going to have some challenges and you're gonna to have to work around those problems. Also, if you look closer, the fuel tank slopes forward and that front part of the tank actually holds gas when it's full. So if you're riding with a full tank off-road, for some reason, you're gonna feel it even more. Also, this bike doesn't have very much ground clearance either. So when the going gets tough, you're gonna scrape up a little bit of this bottom and reach the limits of this bike pretty quick. Also, this brake pedal is flimsy. Almost every time I go out for a ride, I have to bend it back. So if it's something that bothers you, obviously it hasn't to me yet because I keep bending it back. I'm just waiting for this thing to break. You may want to replace this thing too. And my last complaint about taking it off-road, and again, I realize Triumph didn't make this bike for it, but it's very cosmetically fragile. Every time this bike hits the ground, something will break, even if you have crash protection on it. I've replaced the shrouds on this bike three times, the turn signal six times, the lower chain guard is made of plastic and broke on the second ride, and the OEM crash bars mount to a part in the engine where you could break it with the palm of your hand. Not too long ago, I did a video about the five design flaws where I cover all of these in detail. So there'll be a link down in the description box if you wanna learn a little bit more about some of the design miscues of this bike. I know it's not a motocross bike, but if you're gonna take it off road, expect to replace everything cosmetically. Now, when it comes to the traction control on this motorcycle, the easiest way I can say this, it's a gimmick. You have five different riding modes that come with this bike. A rain mode, road mode, street mode, off-road mode, and off-road pro. The only two worth using is either off-road or off-road pro. And the rain mode and road mode are almost unusable. I'm going to show you a video on what I'm talking about, but it's almost as if something is wrong with the Bike. It's not like a typical traction control that just slightly cuts power to the engine. It completely removes power from the engine. As you'll see in this video when I use both rain and road mode, notice how I go full throttle but the bike doesn't even move forward. So I have no idea why they're even on there and why they work this way. In fact, I could probably make the argument that it's dangerous to even ride that way. Alright, here we go. That's full throttle, look. <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere, look. Terrible, look at that. And let's move it into uh, rain. Let's see how rain is. Oh, it's even worse, look. Oh my 
my goodness. So you like full throttle. Okay, so that's not very good. And that's, uh, that's all the way like that. Unless you get off-road pro, which is where I like to, uh, sorry, where I like to ride it most of the time. It gives me freedom of, of, of the bike. Another flaw I would say that I don't like is this toggle. This is just me nitpicking here about this bike, okay? Is this toggle switch, because I think it should be something more along a flush mount, because by doing this, it can break, and it did on me. And when it broke, I happened to be out in the desert, but in deeper sand than this. And when you turn off the bike and turn it back on, it's one of those that hasn't caught up with technology where it saves your last rider mode. And the default is that street mode I just showed you. So here I'm in the desert and I can't get my bike out of that mode and it's just stuck in the sand. So I eventually had to find like a stick and, and, and toggle it around until I could get it back into off-road. It was a pain in the ass. Now here's what the interesting thing about that too is Triumph fixed it, but I thought when I went back to the dealer, they would just pop one of these, what, 50 cent switches back into it? No, it's a whole unit. It, was a, it costs like $200, they paid for it, but it's a whole unit. They had to take the whole bike apart to wire it, and it's all connected to the heated grips and everything like that. And what was funny is when I went back to pick it up, the cruise control and the heated grips didn't work, so I had to take it back and I had to redo it, so pretty comical stuff. Now you can easily overcome this problem because I never ride in those. I'm either riding in off-road pro or off-road mode. And the main difference there is that in the off-road modes, it gives you the real bike where the motor feels the strongest. The off-road mode has front and rear ABS along with traction control, but the traction control in that mode is doable. With the off-road pro mode, you're able to disable all of the electronics and just ride the bike itself. And as I said before, because it lacks power to me, this is where I find it's the best. This bike really doesn't need traction control. So how would I rate this bike? As I said before, I will call it the Swiss Army knife of motorcycles. It doesn't do anything spectacular, it just does everything well. On-road, off-road, commuting, riding two up, long rides, short rides, and everything in between, it will do it. I said some negative things about this motorcycle in the review, but in all honesty, I'm just nitpicking for the sake of the video. The good far outweigh the bad, and the Triumph Tiger is just one amazing motorcycle. This bike has been a moving storybook for me, and the experiences I've had on this motorcycle make me want to keep it forever. I know there's a lot of other motorcycles out there that would suit my riding style better, but there's something special about this Triumph Tiger. I would rather have a slower bike that I love than a faster bike that I hate, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate one second on buying another Triumph Tiger. That's how good this bike is. And this is why most people, in my opinion, who own Triumphs keep buying the Triumphs. They just have a certain mystique and a refinement to them that makes them hard to let go of. So, who wants to see me thrash a Tiger 900?